To refinish a hardwood floor, one has to sand it with the floor sanding machine. After a few thousand hours of operation, the machine's drum, which drives the sandpaper, wears out. The contractor can either replace it with a new one or send the worn one out to be reconditioned. This company specializes in reconditioning worn sander drums. That means restoring them to light new condition. A drum can be reconditioned as many as eight times before it has to be replaced. The first step is to grind off what's left of the aluminum drum's worn rubber surface. It gets worn down due to the drum rotation speed of up to 2,600 revolutions per minute and often gets damaged by running over protruding nails or carpet tacks. A worn drum doesn't hold the belt of sandpaper taut, which causes the machine to slip to the left and right rather than sand smoothly in a straight line. A worker places the drum on a press to detach the arbor shaft, which attaches the drum to the sanding machine. When the drum was new, its aluminum sides were freshly painted. That paint is now mostly worn away. Sawdust and rubber residue fill the drum's nooks and crannies, so a worker places the drum inside a sandblast cabinet and puts his hands through gloves that reach inside. He holds the drum in one hand, a sandblasting nozzle in the other, and in a few minutes, the drum is pristine. But it still has an ever so thin layer of rubber remaining. So another worker mounts the drum on a lathe and shears off the rubber with a knife. Then he passes the knife again, removing a mere 10th of a millimeter of aluminum. This exposes a new smooth aluminum surface. Then, a worker cuts a sheet of brand new rubber to the exact length needed to cover the circumference of the drum. The rubber is nearly two-thirds of an inch thick, roughly twice the thickness of the worn layer they grind it off. After clamping it down flat, the worker applies an adhesive designed for rubber. Then he sprays an accelerant onto the drum's prime surface to strengthen its bond with the rubber. He lets the accelerant dry for six hours, then spreads a second coat of adhesive on the rubber and wraps it around the drum. 24 hours later, with the adhesive cured, another worker mounts the drum on a lathe and trims off the excess rubber from both sides. He then sands the trimmed edges to make them perfectly flush with the sides of the drum. The drum goes back on the grinder now to finalize the overall diameter of the drum. Using a ruler, a worker adjusts a measuring instrument called a caliper to the diameter measurement. He then grinds down the rubber a bit at a time, spot checking with the caliper regularly. The worker stops grinding once the caliper check tells them the drum diameter is correct. If a sanding drum isn't perfectly balanced, it vibrates and disfigures the floor. So a worker mounts the drum on a balancing machine. He applies a band of masking tape and draws a black line on the tape to give the machine a reference point from which to start measuring. As the machine rotates the drum, a sensor measures velocity on both sides simultaneously. If the velocity is inconsistent on either side, he balances the drum by adding or reducing weight on the problem side. To reduce weight, a worker drills a hole to remove aluminum. To add weight, he fills the drilled hole with tin, a metal that's far heavier than the aluminum he removed. The final step is to repaint the sides. A worker masks the rubber with a template, then sprays the aluminum with rust-inhibiting metal paint. Now, this main component of a floor sander is as good as new, ready to bring a worn wood floor back to life.